Today we're going to cover our latest enterprise product, Automate BPA Server 9. After installation, there are three visible components. The first is a Server Management Console, or SMC, which provides a centralized point for management as well as administration. Next, we have the Development Client. The Development Client is comprised of two parts. You have the Workflow Designer and you have the Task Builder. The workflow designer, as you see here, is a graphical representation of a particular business process, an interactive flow diagram, if you will. To create these specific tasks, this tutorial file sort, this compressed file, you're going to use what's called the task builder. The task builder is a development interface used to visually assemble a particular series of steps. This is done through a drag and drop interface. And last, you have the agent. The agent is a thin client that is installed in the background. It is required on any machine where you want execution to occur. Why don't we see how this all fits together? So let's close these. Okay, so let's create a new workflow. First thing is come over here. We'll click on the new. And now let's give it a name, Tutorial 1. Once it's been created, let's open it up. So we'll come over here and click Edit. And now it opens the workflow designer. If you look over here at the available objects, you have the ability to create task. You can use the flow control to create logic. And we have these things called events and conditions. With these events and conditions, you can essentially trigger a logical starting point. So we have things that deal with files, things that deal with schedules, with keystrokes, with performance, with processes, a whole bunch of different things. Everything here is drag and drop. Just select the items that you want on the left and drag them over into the right. You know what? Why don't we pull in a couple of tasks that I created earlier? If we come down here to our repository and expand the tasks, here are a couple that I created earlier today. Anything that you create in BPA server is automatically stored in your repository. From there, you can pull them out and use them in other different workflows. So you know what? Let's pull out this tutorial file sort. Inside this task, I have a couple of steps that, based off a particular file name, will sort them into the respective folder. Now let's say we want to email the administrator when everything is finished. So you know what? Let's drag out another one, the email administrator. Now we'll need to connect the arrows in order to create an execution path. So what we'll do is we'll just click on this and we'll just drag this out to this guy. Now the way we have it set up is it'll sort the files and when it's finished, then it'll email the administrator with the logs telling him that it's been finished. Okay, so let's move this up and we'll make this look pretty. Okay, now let's say we wanted to run this at 10 p.m. every single evening. So what we'll do is next we'll drag over a schedule trigger. And then again, we'll connect the arrows. And then now let's open this guy up. And so inside here, let's say we wanted to run Monday through Friday at 10 p.m. So we'll come down here to specific days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then we'll set our time right here. So we'll say 10, 0, 0, 0, 0. And we'll click Update. So now this process at 10 p.m. Monday through Friday is going to first sort the files and then email the administrator once it's been finished. And again, you're not limited to just one. You can have as many of these connected over here. So if I also wanted to put a file trigger, I could do that as well. Before we can actually sort any of the files, we need to make sure there's files in that particular folder. So you know what? Why don't we download it from our FTP server? To do so, we're going to come up here. We're going to drag over a new task. And we're going to call this FTP download. If you notice this demo room one here, what this means is this is the current agent that's assigned to this particular task. If you had additional agents, you could assign which one you wanted. So now that that's all set up, let's open this up in Task Builder. So we'll right click, we'll go to Edit, and then we'll open up Task Builder. Once the Task Builder is open, this is the window that you'll see. Over here on the left, these are all your available actions. They're organized into logical folders. So for example, for FTP, that's located inside this network folder right here. Over here on your right, this is your workspace. So what you're going to be doing is dragging these actions over from the left into this right area. Down here, you have your debug pane. So of course, you can see the output of particular things. You can look at what's contained inside variables, where you have your breakpoints, your watches, and so forth. So for this example, let's drag over the FTP action. And when we do that, you're going to see this action properties. And here are all the activities that you can perform with FTP. You can log on, you can log off, you can upload, download, rename, delete, all that good stuff. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to log on. And the first thing is the host. So, And then our username and our password. And notice all you can see is dots, so nobody will know. 
Under your advanced, this is where you can specify what type of FTP. So of course we support the standard FTP, we support FTP with SSL, implicit as well as explicit, as well as SFTP. So for this example, let's just select FTP, then we'll click OK. And so now this is uh, logged on. So what we want to do next is we want to actually download some of the files into a folder. So again, we drag over another step, and then this time we'll select download, and then we'll come over here and click on this little folder. Now, BPA server has its own FTP engine, so you don't need a third-party application. You can just come over here and connect. And then let's browse our folder. So let's select download, and we'll come over here and we'll select all files. And then now we need to specify where on the local machine we want them downloaded it to. So we'll again click over here, and let's browse down here, and we'll say, let's put it in here. And then we'll click OK. And in under file options, you can basically choose if you want to overwrite it or whether or not there's some kind of exclusion max or date or something like that. So we'll click OK. And then in, because we already logged on, we can say it's session based. And then we'll click OK. And then now once we're finished with that, the last thing we need to do is log off. So we'll drag over one more FTP step. We'll come over here and we'll select log off. And then we'll click OK. So now let's run this once just to make sure this is all working properly. To do that, we're going to come over here to this blue circle. We're going to do run selected. You can do run all. You can do run from here. So for this example, we'll just run everything. So we'll come over here and we'll click run. And it looks like it ran properly. We'll come to output. And here we can see each of the individual steps. So these are all the files that it downloaded. It downloaded 12 files and the status and everything looks good. So I think we're fine here. Let's save and close. So you know what? Let's put this all together now. So let's delete this. We'll bring this FTP down. And then now let's connect all the arrows, dot to dot. Okay, so now the way we have it set up is at 10 p.m. Monday through Friday, it's going to first download the files from our FTP server, and then after that, it's going to sort those files. And once those files have been sorted, it's going to email the administrator. So you know what? Let's run it and make sure everything works. So come up here, and you can basically see its progress. So the check mark is good. So it finished this one, it finished this one, and then now it's emailing the administrator. So let's verify that it's working properly. So we'll come into here. Files were originally downloaded into this from folder. A copy was made into the backup location. And then from there, they're sorted. So the accounting files are now in here. The HR files, now in here. And the sales files are now in here. So it looks like the movement's all good. Now the next thing is we need to verify whether or not it sent the email out. So here's the email that I received. So it's sent from me to me, and it's got the attachment for the text file. So that's all good as well. So it looks like everything works. And as you can see, BPA gives you the power to very quickly and easily create automation in a complex business process. We hope that you have found this introduction helpful, and we thank you for your time.